Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Rocket Launcher, written by Hope Data Adam. I've had my share of war. I remember that time where I'm attached to the Walker Division. Was just a simple rifleman carrying out orders given by my superiors, eating military rations out of cans. I had several friends in that division, kind and caring. Well, our superior officer is harsh, rash, and loud. It was a fun time. One day, our company with three walkers was tossed to a sector in a forest. We were ordered to advance through the forwarding element and to essentially become the first to engage the enemy. I recall walking through the forest with a blissful calmness. The beautiful melody of avians chirping and the rustling of sounds caused by isopods. Our three walkers walked alongside us past the trees. The sound of their mechanical legs stomping the ground certainly was a reassuring thing. Having their support and being in their presence created a sense of safety. They were about 6.4 meters tall, the size of a small house, and are manned by two crew members, one operator and one commander. The walkers were bipedal, just like us. Through gyroscopic stabilization, they can stand up straight and walk without falling over. They're all fangs of our military, the hammer to a nail, and the firepower they bring to a battle that is significant and deadly for the enemy. Our war with the humans has proved costly to our chain of command. Their speed and effectiveness in battle caught us off guard, and we had to radically change our tactics and strategies to match the humans. No more trenches, they said. Everyone is to be mobile and on their feet, always walking and always marching. And they finally brought in the walkers. My commanding officer was highly confident that the walkers would bring us victory over the humans. At the time, I too thought that, but a sense of skepticism lingered. And my CO was already biased, being the son of a high-ranking military officer in the military. He takes pride and confidence in his work. We had been walking for nearly an hour through the woodlands, following a small but useful trail left behind by settlers of the planet. It all happened so quickly, a sudden flash giving way to a ground-shaking force. Being at the back of the formation meant that I was able to witness it all. It came from within the dense shrubbery, an ignition of a primal sense. It had struck one of the legs of the walker, exploding upon impact, and blew it straight off. Shrapnel and pieces fly off at high speeds, injuring those that were near it in the chaos ensued. The next few moments are occupied by concussive launches, followed up by explosions. Our walkers had been disabled, their legs blown off, and even their cockpits destroyed with crew in sight turned into ludicrous gibs. They didn't even give us a chance to even panic, as deafening gunfire shredded my company and even gravely injured me. One of the human's kinetic projectiles tearing through my body armor and straight into my abdomen. The smell of burned metal and smoke choked me up, and I fell back to the ground and coughed heavily, suffering from my injuries. I bled from the wound while the kinetic projectile implanted itself within me, nesting. I lost consciousness shortly after, waking up several hours later in a human camp being tended to by one of the combat doctors. After they used cruel weapons, I didn't expect the humans to be so caring and affectionate even to their enemies. The combat doctor cleared the nesting piece of metal and bandaged my wound. Of course, it was still the enemy so that I had my hands cuffed and covered. I stayed for two days in that camp. After that, they gave me some freedom to walk around the camp after I'd been a good silent one, they said. During my walks around the camp, I was accompanied by a human private the equivalent of a rifleman in our army. I soon discovered a long tubular weapon with a crate of conical-shaped warheads. The human private humored me. Knock out your walkers in one foul swoop. You like them? I shook my head at that moment. So these were the weapons that easily disabled and destroyed our proud war machines so easily. I was shocked and confused. Our weapons have a major limitation. Recoil, Newton's third law. I'm sure your crownies uh, understand that. He called me crownies, a human insult due to the long crown on our biology. It vents gases out the back using an integrated propellant. It launches the warhead and accelerates it towards the target. Once hitting the target, the warhead launches a focused explosion out of the apex of the conical-shaped explosive. 
a conical void is shaped into the tip with a copper liner. It forces a jet of hot molten metal. The result is a weapon capable of penetrating an alarming thickness of armor, while the explosion helped it. He spoke to me again before we moved on. The gods gave us fire, but blowing stuff up. That was our idea. End of story. Story number two. Nish Appeal, written by Algy Father Anthracite. Gary was tired. He'd been working non-stop lately. Being a kitchen sink game publisher was both mentally exhausting and financially difficult. Thankfully, he had some money saved up from his previous job. He'd been a programmer for his last ten years and had sandbagged all of his money so that he could quit his job and make his passion project. He had always been a fan of horror games, but he had never seen one that really felt that took things to the extreme. Most studios weren't willing to make something that would only appeal to a small market segment. Gary knew his game would never be a success, but he knew some people would love it. He was making a game for them. He had spent several years planning the plotline in his free time and commissioning artwork from freelance artists. He finally had everything he needed and so quit his job to work on his project. It had taken another few years, but he had finally finished the game and the compiler was running for the last time. Once it was done, he uploaded the game, put out some announcements on social media and delivered his gift to the world's horror fans. Controversy erupted online today as a small indie developer's game garnered a small but rabid fanbase and condemnation from everyone else. The game, paid to red, was rotten by one man as a passion project. While the game is age-gated at 18+, and is rated M for mature, its extreme graphic content has left a bad taste in the mouths of various reviewers. The Catholic Church has spoken out against the game as well, saying that it is an affront to human decency and the deceased product is of an unwell individual in need of serious psychological help. Your Honor, my client did nothing wrong. He has clearly shown from the provenance of all the graphic images the product was rated correctly and the download was age-gated. If anything, my client should be commended for his attempts to keep the work out of inappropriate hands. Finally, as no one was harmed in the production of the game, it clearly falls under the auspice of the First Amendment. While the content of the game may be distasteful to most people, that in no way removes my client's right to publish it. I rest my case. Jesus Christ, where did you find this? Oh, it's awful. I read about it in an article about controversial games. I spent months searching for it. Finally, I found someone who had a copy for sale. It's pretty brutal. Is that an arm? Oh... I'm going to be ill. You better not let the captain know that you have this installed on the ship's network. Right. We're going to go. I'm going to heave. Later, worse. The last thing we want is a war with these people. We have to do something to push them back towards negotiating. Can anyone think of anything that might make them rethink this declaration? Sir, permission to speak freely. Granted. Maybe we could scare them into avoiding conflict with us. We have minimal offensive capability, and in one-on-one -on -one combat, they'd take us apart. How do you suggest we scare them? Well, sir, um, do you play video games? The High Council sat around the edge of the table of circuits, stunned to silence by the video they'd just watched. The atrocities committed by these newly discovered creatures were truly horrific. That any species would commit such savagery against their own kind as a form of training made the entire council reconsider the prospect of war. While dying in combat was one thing, being consumed while still alive or tortured to death in any of the ways depicted were literal feats far worse than death. No one on the council wanted to be remembered for engaging such animals in war. You better thank your lucky stars that worked, Commander. I figured at that point it couldn't hurt. They really wanted to fight us, and when they saw that video, they were either going to run screaming or just attack us anyway. Where did you even find that video? It's uh, nauseating. One of my crew is a vintage game aficionado. He had recently found out about it and had procured a copy. When I was asking for suggestions, he threw it out. Personally, I don't get the appeal, but I'm damn well keeping a copy of that video in my ship database I'm assigned to from now on. I have to put him on a service award and a psych screening. End of story. 
This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Bob the Dragon, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan 95, Fjordig Yol, Meridian 117, Elysia, Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albard and Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.